Hey, good morning, friends. Good morning, good morning. Excited to get jumping into Story of God. Story of God, uh, Job chapter 2 this morning. Are we at Job 3? No, we're in Job chapter 2. We're in Job chapter 2. Oh, it is. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is our third <laughs> Thank you for feeding those lines, too. <laughs> uh, tomorrow is our third anniversary of Story of God. We will be doing it. Uh, and she says, and it's gone again. But you can hear me, can't you? Um, Hold on. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Here. Oh, and the music's gone. She yeah. must mean the music's gone. Yeah. All right, well, we can deal without the music this morning. Gotta love it. We're not on our set this morning. No, we're on a different set this morning. So please give us just a moment to get some things worked out, if you would, to get something worked out. Talk amongst yourselves this morning. The Lord is good. He is. 
They were having some camera issues here. Um, but that's okay. We're just gonna have to select There we that. go. That'll work. All right. He's got it set and we'll put some of the junk on. Yeah. You ready to toggle over? It's just sorry, it says Carolee and that's it. It's okay. <laughs> and it we're switched up. It's okay. <laughs> hey, good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yep. Uh oh and hold on, hold on. Oh, it's it's waiting for transition. All right, so we're uh, we're still working through. <laughs> Let's see if we can. Hold on, we'll demo the. No, it's just gonna say no. either David That's Lee okay. or Carrie Lee. That's this okay. Morning. We'll go with it this morning. <laughs> you may be Kara. I will let you be Kara this morning. How yeah. So we're setting up. Uh, we're setting up for uh, church life resources, as you can see. Um, it's all good. Uh, John says I'm at work. Um, yeah, so we're setting up for church life, a church life resources shoot today that we're going to be doing. Uh, so uh, please excuse uh, the background uh, and our fumbling as we get back into um, as we get back into story of God this morning. So let's go ahead with the opener. My name is David Lee, and I'm Carol Lee, and we're working our way through the Bible one chapter at a time. And today we're going to be in Job chapter two. So come with us as we chapter from Genesis to Revelation, one yes. one chapter at a time. We're having a great time doing it. Yes. Thank you, Donna and Stephanie, for uh, being with us this morning uh, as we take a jump. Enjoying the book of Job. Yeah, I, re I really am. And actually, I'm enjoying, um, uh, as I study about it, I'm enjoying finding some revelation that um, the Lord is just bringing up to me. And, yeah. And... Um, uh, the book of Job, let me just say this, is very widely questioned um, for several reasons. Lots of people have speculated and pontificated about it. And there's Pontificate. a... Pont yes. That's your $5, $5 word for today. For today. Yeah. So a lot of people have um, this opinion over here about the theology of the book of Job. And then on the other side, there are lots of theological thoughts over here. And then every thought in between... And yep. so I'm enjoying studying through them and then asking the Lord to form the thoughts that he would have me to think about his word. So and good. I want to encourage you to do the same. I, people of God, we need to ask the Holy Spirit what it is that he would have us to think yeah. about his word. Yeah. Because his word is made available to us by his Holy Spirit. Right. Um, uh, and so let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's jump into it. So here Can we go. You know, let me just say, no, I was ahead. I was really pretty daunted by the book of Job. I was like, oh no. Because daunted. So you were scared of... I was a little bit nervous about nervous. it. Nervous. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous That's because true. I was like, well, so many theologians have so many different ideas about the book of Job. But then, and I said, I said that today, that I said I'm a little bit nervous. I said so many theologians have different, like this person... Interpretations, you know, this, yeah. Absolutely, different interpretations. And... Um, and I said, I don't, you know, who am I that I would come and take a stab at something very differently than yeah. uh, someone who's published. But then the Lord said, you're the one, you're the one who's doing what I asked you to do. And so I felt like the Lord said, hey, be, be confident with who I am in you and be faithful to what I've given you to do. Yeah. So. You're the one that I want. Who, 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 baby. Uh oh. Honey. Honey. We are, uh, we're dropping frames left and right. Okay. All right. It's because we're out in the... Out in the sticks. In, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump into it then. Right. Here we go. Job chapter two. Yes. Oh, look. It's right there. Yeah. Um, on another day, the angels came to, the, to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming through the earth and going back and forth on it. Okay, so jumping into that, man, there is there is so much in that verse right there. Um, <laughs> good morning, Pastor Roger. There's so much in that verse right there that uh, sort of encapsulates a lot of angelology, um, demonology even, and the the understanding the 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 presence of God, understanding who God is, and the authority and the and the um, um, 
I was going to say monarchy, but it's not monarchy. The authority. Supremacy, sovereignty. Sovereignty. The sovereignty of God. Go ahead, Carrie. You, you had some thoughts this morning. I know uh, you were. Oh, well, as I was doing some reading and studying, um, a, a theologian said, um, this should, um, let me see, because I, I, I highlighted, highlighted the note, and I just, I felt, I just wanted to reshape that thought, because, um, uh, okay, that's what it said. It said that angels seemed, this passage, these first two verses seem to indicate that angels have um, an open access to God, and I just said out loud to David, I don't think that means that. I th okay, whether or not they have open access to God, I think it just reiterates what Job, the first chapter said, I think it was verses 6 through 8, where we talked about on Wednesday, we talked about how this reveals the fact that the angels report to God and yeah. his authority and yeah. his sovereignty. And we talked about that for a little bit yesterday. And I think it, I think it only serves to prove um, exactly what we talked about, that the angels and even the demons, Satan himself must present himself and report to yes. God. Yes. God asks both passages. God asks, where have you been? Right. Uh, and we talked about that, you know, like the little kid with the cookie and the chips, I mean, and on his face. And you say, where have you been? And the kid has to ask, the answer because... The kid knows there's tells. You know, yeah. I have a tell on me. My mom sees it, and now, um, well, and we also see we also see in this passage we see uh, the enemy's explanation of. Uh, I mean, he says it from his own mouth, but the reality is that it gives us the explanation of what the enemy is doing, what the enemy is about, what the enemy is constantly doing, and what he is constantly doing is going back and forth across the earth. Uh, and the scripture says, seeking whom he may uh, devour, right? He is constantly looking for something of God's creation, something of God's identity in order to ruin on the earth uh, because, because of his rebellion, because of, uh, because of his desire uh, to destroy the things that ultimately that God has made. Right. Uh, because he wants, uh, again, the, the ultimate purpose of the enemy is to, is to be an authority over all things, okay? He wants to be the king of all things. And so uh, in the process, what he, and because he cannot create, because the spark of creation is not within him, right. the life of creation is within the Father, then uh, ultimately what winds up happening is he just winds up manipulating and destroying the things of the Father. And so here he comes before, uh, before God to report on what he's been doing. Even the enemy comes to report to the Father right. because the Father ultimately holds all the sovereignty, all of the authority in this situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to keep going? Yeah, let's go. Verse 3. Then the Lord said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil, and he still maintains his integrity, though you indicted me against him to ruin him without any reason. Uh, verse 4. Skin for skin, Satan replies. A man will give all he has for his own life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bone. And he will surely curse your face. Verse 6. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then. He is in your hands, but you must spare his life. Um, is, that, are you, is everything good? Yeah, we're good. good keep going. Um, so... So you want to keep reading, or you want to stop there? No, I mean we can, you can keep reading. I thought you had something to say there. Yeah, you know I did. Um, so here we see um, Satan, or sort of revealing his nature. The whole, the whole of Scripture is the Lord revealing to his who he is, right, and who we are. But here we see for the first time in. Uh, as we've turned the pages left in the Old Testament, yeah. we see the enemy revealing his nature outrightly. And I want to I want to point you to this thought process. As you read a novel, as you read a fiction work, don't you begin to form your opinions of the work of the uh, of the work of the one who is the enemy in that fiction work. In the same way, allow your allow your thoughts um, to to go to um, 
the nature of our enemy. Allow your yeah. thoughts to think about his nature. If yeah. we're thinking about God's nature, then we also need to inform our own thoughts about the nature of the enemy. Yeah. Um, one theologian, I know, I know I, I'm, I'm talking about what a lot of writers have said, but I want to tell you what I felt like the Lord connected for me as I was reading through it and studying it. I, I, I read a theologian that said, we should see this passage as the enemy strengthening his grip in the situation. And I, and, and I said to myself, that doesn't seem right. <coughs> God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. What should we see this as? How should our renewed mind see this? Right. And I felt like the Lord connected some dots for me. And, and the Lord said, you know, sometimes the Lord coaches me and he asks me questions. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me, he said, well, what, how do you, when you read a novel, how do you see the introduction of the care of the the evil the bad character how do you and so i felt like the lord coached me through that and and just like i just did with you for a second and i felt like the lord said in the same way we need to begin to see you know because i'm a googler I, I google the end of things i am i am not david will say stop googling <coughs> she's um, ruining it I, yeah but it's it's not about the it's not about the story process for me it's about the end for me it, it just it's a it's a uh it's a driver personality it's, it's a type a thing and so um i feel like i feel like i want to i want to share this with you um the lord said to me read this passage and see how the enemy is even beginning to boast of authority he doesn't have. But also see how the enemy reveals his spirit and how we ought to respond in opposite spirit. Right, right. Because the enemy in any good fiction novel will respond in opposite spirit to um, to the hero or to the heroine. So the, the enemy ultimately wants to hide himself in lies, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So he wants to cover over the reality of who he is, what he wants to do, how he accomplishes his mission. And ultimately, when you don't know your enemy, then you can't fight your enemy. Right. What the scripture does is it reveals the enemy for who he is. That yes. the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And as Randy Clark has said over and over again, when you spot him... You got them. In other words, when you understand their Absolutely. nature and their mission and what they're what they're trying to do in your life specifically and how they're interacting in your uh, in your sphere in in your everyday uh, life, then you can begin to create a defense against what's going on and ultimately take it to the Lord. Absolutely. And so here, I think when when the enemy begins to engage us. He is engaging us out of his own vanity, yeah. out of his own pride. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you to see how in this passage, it totally illuminates the enemy here as vain as he can be, um, uh, comes at God and jeers at God again. Yeah. And so I want you to see how the opposite spirit of not, on, not glorifying the works of the enemy, but glorifying the works of God. Praising God, if you will. I want you to see how praising God in this instance yes. is the answer to the antithesis or the opposite thing going on with the enemy. Yeah. Right? Right. Okay. So here at Satan's vain and, and God is self-existent. So here we go. Verse 7. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. Now that, that's pretty pretty much bottom of the barrel right there. Uh, he, uh, Job, Job, it, Job has lost everything. Family, uh, cattle, uh, house. He's lost everything. And he has what uh, ultimately the, the, um, uh, the boils that Satan afflicted him with ultimately what he's doing have you ever picked at a scab before or picked at a picked at, Kara's a picker Kara likes to pick at pimples and things like that and stuff she, she likes to she'll find stuff on me and she'll be like hold on a second and she'll look at it and she'll be picking at it what is that right okay all right so so i i understand what it is to pick it you were gonna uh, you were gonna say something mm -hmm. no it's, it's, it, but uh it's an enduring quality darling i like it when you find stuff on me not so much when you actually like remove the thing that doesn't feel good but anyway but <laughs> part of the uh 
part of the part of the deal is here of Job is sitting on the you know the ashes of what was once his life, and he is using this broken piece of pottery to sort of like cut open these boils and try to bleed these boils of their pus. Happy happy uh, Thursday. Thursday, everybody. Friday. Friday. Is it Friday? Happy Friday, everybody. Um, but uh, he's having a difficult time with this uh, because, uh, and and this is like the lowest of low, except for you know his uh, his wife coming in in just a second. But this is the this is the lowest of low that Job has been, and his personal health, man. If you've ever had personal health problems, it just it absolutely sucks the life from you. Uh, and so Job is Job's in a difficult place right here. Yeah. All right. So verse nine, his wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Now, Job attributing the difficulties to being a part of God's plan doesn't mean that God doesn't mean a few things. It doesn't mean that God intends us harm. Yeah. Number one. Number two, it also doesn't mean that God is doing these things. We, right. We're seeing, um, we're seeing, you know, the the third heavens kind of a conversation going on. Right. And we know what's going on behind the scenes, and, and it doesn't mean that um, God is not good. Yeah. So, um, so Job says to his wife, um, "Shall we accept good from God and not trouble?" It does not mean we should form around our theology around the thought that God desires to prove something to us in order that we, God desires to prove um, the fact that we should serve him even in the middle of difficulties he's placing on us. Yes. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights in whom there is no shifting shadows. Right. In other words, there's no darkness in God. All light. John talks about it over and over. All light comes from God. If it's yes. darkness, there's there's nothing about it that's in God. Yeah. Therefore, when you think about um, when you think about Job's response, don't see it as a response that we ought to take, but see it at well. It's, okay, this part of Job's response we should take his faithfulness. Yes, his consistency in his um, focused attention on God. Yes, God is good. Regardless of what's happening, I will praise God. Right, and I think I, I think also. Um, okay, so uh, so I'm a I'm a fan of con, uh, of Christian uh, fiction writers. Kara was talking about fiction earlier, but I'm a I'm a fan of uh, Christian fiction writers like C.S. Lewis, like uh, like George MacDonald, and both of those guys believed in a um, theology called Christus Victor. Um, which was in opposition to a theology called, a, a doctrine called um, penal substitution. Ultimately, the substitutionary work of Christ was that on the cross, he fulfilled the, um, fulfilled the, he the was our payment. Substitute. He was our substitute. He fulfilled the payment for sin, that ultimately sin leads to death. And so Jesus died on the cross in order to fulfill that. A lot of, lot of scripture seems to support that. But with, but these guys um, had it in their thoughts that 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 does not speak well of a kind-hearted God that they see in the rest of Scripture of the of the gentle and loving God that they see that that God would send His Son to die that that seems a disconnect from the loving God that ultimately they believe that the Scripture said. Now here here's what I have to say about that: God is loving. God is good. God is kind. And sometimes when we love. We have to do things um, uh, that may not look kind in the moment right. and compassionate in the moment, but ultimately set things up for a larger gain in the future. This is uh, this is why you know my kids. <laughs> uh, you know, I tell my kids. I told my I told my son once. I said, "Look, I would never intentionally hurt you." And then he looked up at me and said, "Well, then why do you spank me?" Um, and, and the answer was, yes, I love you. Sometimes the reality is that your, um, your momentary troubles ultimately are setting you up for success as long as there yeah. is a deeper lesson, lesson as a part of that momentary trouble, a deeper understanding that we need to get to because sometimes we're like onions. The, the layers need to be peeled back that's a that's a bad analogy because the onion's hard at the center, 
Um, what's parfaits? Everybody parfait, loves parfaits. Everybody loves parfaits. Sometimes you gotta pull back the um, the 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 crusty exterior. Ooh, like Snickers bars. You have to pull the or the or or M and uh, Now I'm hungry for candy. Uh, you have to pull back the crusty exterior to get to the interior that ultimately the lesson has to be brought into. Uh, Stephanie says, yeah, but he loves us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his son for us. It's the epitome of love. Exactly. Um, and ultimately the scripture says it pleased God in order to pour out the wrath of all sin on the Messiah. Because what it, what it meant was then that all of the world that God loved, according to, to the book of John, that God loved, could ultimately be saved. And, uh, and when we look at the, um, you know, so to say, the ethics of God, God will put us through tests in order that we learn the deeper understanding. Now, Job, God allows this to happen to Job. And it becomes a test for Job. Job has this moment, okay? And let me let me say this about uh, about what we just read about Job's wife. I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. Please forgive no, me. No, you're all right. I have a couple of things. Job has a moment now where his wife, his partner in this whole deal, right, says, uh, "Okay, curse just God just curse God and die." And let me say one one thing to to the future generations that may listen to this: choose wisely the mate. That you that you enter into relationship with. I chose very very wisely with the mate that I chose to enter into this covenant, this life with. The person that you are yoked with in this life will be when you are at your lowest. Uh, if they will not, if they will not bolster you in that moment, if they will not come in and say. Come on, we got to do this. We can take this hill. This this is the moment. This is the crossroads that the Lord has put us on, and and you can choose the right thing. That is that is why the Lord ultimately yoked us together. It looks like Job here in this chapter is definitely uh, unequally yoked with his wife because in this moment he is staying faithful to God, but his his wife is like, "Well, why are you out here?" suffer why don't you just curse god and die why don't you just end it all right um it is very important to be yoked with people that ultimately can lead you back into an understanding of the deeper nature of god uh and that this is only momentary and that's an extremely part uh an important part of life is to yoke yourself up with someone who can help you i did yes. good i i yoked up i don't know that you did good <laughs> But, yeah, anyway, go ahead. Let's go. Verse 11. When Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Timonite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. He's one of the are... shortest guys in the Bible, by the way. I knew we weren't going to get through. <laughs> Bildad the Shuhite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shorter than Nehemiah. Yeah, shorter mm -hmm. than Nehemiah. Okay. All right, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Bye. Um, so when his three, three friends heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, they set out from their home and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they mm. tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. They sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Pretty good friends. <coughs> yeah, you know Pretty what? Good I think the friends of Job get a bad rap. I do often. too. But if I'm not you, sure what they were supposed to do in that situation. If you have friends that will run to you and weep with you because of all the difficulty and then shut up for seven days and let you grieve. Yes. Those are good friends. Yeah. Those yeah. are good friends. <laughs> so uh, we start off. Now, after this, they're like, Job, you must have done something wrong. And I, and I love, and we're going to get into the, each one of them. They, oh gosh, you know. Friends are good friends, yes. I mean, they have their difficulties, and each one of these friends, as we get later on in the chapters, are going to talk about how good they are and how much they know and, and how wise they are. But anyway, you've got to love and take people yes. as they are. Yeah, let me just let me just say this as we as we close and as we jump into prayer. Yeah. There is nothing that is not completely good that, that you have in your life that came from God. 
I, I, if you will shift your perspective, be careful what you would say has come from God. Um, be careful what you would allow your heart to believe was mm. a gift from God because mm. there is nothing that is not completely wonderful that is from God. God does not um, <coughs> God does not strike us, God does not curse us, God does not afflict us. God it's not in his nature. And so um, he did all of that to his son so that we could be um, completely whole, so that we could be completely yeah. righteous, so that we could be completely one with him, so that we could have fellowship. And so that we, when he calls us in the cool of the day, like in Genesis 3, Genesis 3, when he calls us, we don't have to cover ourselves with fig leaves. Right. Um, and so... Um, I want you to um, take a look at the things in your lives that, that we have said, hey, this came from God. And see if there's, if there's blight in it, if, yeah. there's, if there's sickness, Nastiness. if there's yeah. sickness in it. Yeah, blight is, um, yeah, if it's just not like good. Like weeds. Um, yeah, like weeds to a garden. If Yes, then be careful what you attribute to the goodness of God yeah. this morning. And I say that because I want you to, um, I want you to see what God says you're worth. I want yeah. you to see what God says He wants to give you. I want you to see the promises of God. They're for good and not for harm. Yes. Every thought that He thinks towards you is is beneficial and uh, for your future. It's so good, what He says. Yeah, exactly. Um, I also just want to. Um, well, shoot, you were talking about something, and I, I was something. talking about reshaping our religious mindset that we deserve sickness because God teaches us a lesson. Oh, oh, good, good, good. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, jumping back into our conversation about the substitutionary work of Christ, um, you know, you ask yourself the question sometimes because you look at the Old Testament and then you look at the New Testament and you go, "Did God change?" Right? Because here he's here he rises up against his enemy, he defeats nations, he you know, so on and so forth. And then in the New Testament, you say, well, but Jesus is saying that God is a God of love. Okay, I, I want you to recognize the, the defining mark between the two. And this is, a, this is a very sobering thought. Sober means you, this is very sad, not sad. This is a, when you understand it, it's a, there's a deep sorrow that also it's brings... Reality. It shakes you into reality. Yeah, it also brings deep revelation. The reality is that God poured out all his wrath all his destructiveness towards sin, all of the the what was stored up for you and I in death, he poured that all out on his son. So in reality, do we deserve the wrath and the death and all that that we see in the Old Testament? Yes, yes. we do. According to the law of God, according to the, the way that he set things down, yes, all of that. We, we have all sinned. And deserve death. However, because it was poured out on Christ, because God loved the world, ultimately now we can live in relationship with the Father as Jesus was in relationship with the Father. Pure, holy, clean, um, deserving of blessing, not deserving of curse. And so... That is, that is a wonderful reality that, you know, Kara said just a second ago that, that he does not curse. But, you know, you see God in the Old Testament. You see Joshua standing up and say, choose this day. Are you going to do blessings? Are you going to do curses? Reality is inside of Christ, the curses have already been poured out on Christ. So we get to live in Amen. the blessings of God. Um, we can only choose blessings when we abide in Christ, when we live in him. So it's a, I mean, that's a powerful reality. Uh, it is also a very sobering reality that Jesus took it all for us. And it's one that's not popular with religiousness. Oh, no, 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 no. Because that means, and Paul says, do we keep good? Do we keep on sinning? No, is what he says. But but the reality is um, that my, my sins, past, present, future, have all been covered under the blood of Amen. Christ. And so... It's up to me now to to walk out my salvation, as Paul says, with fear and trembling, with 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 understanding just how close I came. I don't know if you've ever have you ever been in a situation where it was like a near death situation. Yes. 
you walk away from it with fear and trembling. You're going, I could have died. I dodged a bullet on that one. Um, and I think that's, that's honestly how we should be as Christians when we look at the, in the Old Testament, when we look at the wrath of God poured out on people, you just got to go, ooh, missed that one. <laughs> that one was a close call, but Jesus took it for me. That's that working out with fear and trembling, understanding just where we fit in the story of God. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Are you praying? I am. Are you? I am. Okay, good. Mm. Let's do it. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that we did um, dodge a bullet. <laughs> but it was not us that, pu that, that pushed ourselves out of the way. Jesus, it was you, ultimately, that took the bullet for us. You stepped in front of the, the wrath of, of God because of the sin of the world. It was poured out on you, Jesus. And ultimately, you took the payment for our sin. And yes. you gave us life and life abundantly. You gave us grace. Yes. You, you gave us the ability to yes. grab a hold of the blessings yes. that come with yes. obedience and living yes. and submission yes. to God. And so, Father, we humble our hearts and we obey. We humble our hearts yes. and submit. Yes. We humble our hearts and we bring ourselves back into line with your law. We, we, we come back into line with your goodness. We come back into line with the commandments that were given to us to love you with all our heart, mind, soul, strength, and to love each other as we do ourselves. Yes. Father, I pray that... Um, that you would wash us yeah. of the thought processes that the things that afflict us or the things that wound us, God, that those are from you. Yes. Father, wash us for the confession of our mouth that the Lord has cursed us so that we may be taught a lesson, yes. God. Thank I pray, Lord. God, that we would not make confessions of our mouth that deny your glory. But, God, I pray that you would teach us yeah. to, seek, to speak forth your glory, your goodness. Yes. Father, I pray that you would reframe. I pray that our, our, our perspective. I pray, God, that you'd give us new sight. Yes. I pray, God, that you would show us truly what gifts from you look like, from what good sure, things from you look like, like, Father, and yeah. train our mouth to speak forth blessings and not curses. Father, you have given us the ability to produce um, a, a, a blessings from from the authority yeah. you've given in our tongue. And um, thank you, Lord. Yeah, you know what? I just I break religiousness in the name of Jesus ba, 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 that ba, ba, would ba, come ba, ba, against the word of God that yeah. says the the passage that says that we have the authority of life and death in the tongue. Ba, 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 sure, and sure. I just release sure, now sure, sure. authority to the saints yeah. because all because Jesus, you've Poor given God. me authority. Sure. I release authority to the saints of God. That they would begin to work in the power of Take God with their so mouth yes. now, today, in yes. the name of Jesus. And I say, Father, that that um, look, I, I I pray, God, that you would raise a generation Shukurabu. full of powerful words. Yes. I pray, God, that you would raise a generation Take of people you. who are ready to speak forth your praise and yes. your goodness and yes. your glory Shukurabu. and not curse. Um, and not curses for coming from heavenly places. Yes. There yes. are no curses coming from heavenly places. Yes. Praise the Father Cora, of every Cora, good Cora. and perfect gift. Yes. Praise the Father of every good and, and kind thought yeah. uh, toward me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank we you, thank Jesus. you for the test thank that God you're currently God. taking us through. Yeah. For the test that you're working out in our life, just as Job is being tested in this yeah, moment yeah, to see us. of his faithfulness. God, you you ask us to stand in you, not to stand on promises, not to stand on uh, uh, on our own thoughts, not to stand on our opinions, not to stand on our possessions, not to stand on our marriages, but to stand on you, oh God. And so, Father, we accept the test that you would give us today, Father, and we want to pass with flying colors, so we, we keep ourselves submitted to yes. you lord jesus we keep ourselves submitted to your son yes. we we study the word of god in order to be able to keep ourselves submitted to your mm -hmm. holy spirit 
so that we may be guided in this test. That God, we thank you that this is an open book test. Yes. <laughs> that you have not closed the book for us. Yes. Your thank Holy you. Spirit brings understanding yeah, through the word of God so that we can understand how we fit in this test and where we're going and what it is that you're doing through us in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen, guys. Hey, have a great Friday. Yes, have a great weekend. Um and enjoy the power of blessings that you have in your mouth today. Yeah. Bye guys. Retrain your tongue. Bye. Yes. Y'all.